So nobody's gonna sit there and be like, Pedro Pascal. Now everybody's already like, is could he been Reed I'm Richards? like that. A lot of mm. people was like, Pedro I love Pascal, him. He's fantastic. He's, but he's not. He's the, not. Wait, say that again. He's what? He's fan. There you go. <laughs> did it yourself. <laughs> you did it yourself. Welcome back to The Break Room, everybody. I'm Zach Huddleston, and joining me on the panel today, we've got Maud Garrett. Maud Garrett. <laughs> and Jay Washington. I'm Jay Washington. Hi, guys. <laughs> He's the one that's Jay Washington. That's yeah. me. Uh, and today, it's a headline show. We've got some news that's accumulated over the last half a week, and, and a bunch of stuff that's rolled in today that we're excited to talk about. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we're going to get into Universal clutches onto one of its premier IPs. <laughs> Clutches like a death grip. Uh, new Bad Batch trailer just dropped. And when will the official, unofficial, it's all but confirmed, fantastic forecasting news come out for real, for real? For real. For real, real. For real. For real, real. Just for let us know. Real. Oh. Uh, you may hear producer Evan chime in with some questions. In uh, his hole. Oh, from giggle. our live. He'll giggle from time to time as well. He'll <laughs> giggle. He's a giggler. Yeah, I, I am a giggler. He is, though. Evan's so cute. He's such a professional. He often, like, walks away from the microphone he does, as he and giggles. He, like, yeah. he, doesn't he, doesn't wanna, he doesn't want to He doesn't want to ruin the audio. Um, so uh, he'll, he'll be chiming in uh, with questions from our live tw uh, Twitch chat. Thank you to everybody watching along there uh, at Break Room NR. Let's get into it. Yay. Let's get into those headlines. 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 Right here, right now, says the <laughs> says the copy line there. Uh, hey, one of the break room's uh, new favorite Twitch-only topics has now made it onto YouTube. Jurassic Park. Yeah. Jurassic World, to be more specific. Universal Studio announced uh, that it's developing a new Jurassic World movie with the writer of the very first film in the second film, Jurassic Park and uh, Jurassic... What was the second? Lost World. Lost World, thank you. Uh, David Kep. David Kep had a run. He's in the well. 90s. Okay, he wrote the first Spider-Man movie. Mm -hmm. um, he also wrote the last two Indiana Jones movies for he whatever you Dial think about those. Dial of Destiny. Yes, Dial of Destiny and I think Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So he's he's got a very Ooh. close working relationship with Mr. Spielberg, who's still an executive producer of the franchise. Yes. But um, per The Hollywood Reporter, he uh, David Kep is working on the script. And uh, the project, which has been flying under the radar, is far enough along, and the script is well liked. So uh, the studio is whispering of a possible 2025 release. Uh, that means they're ready to get going. Yeah, they've been in pre-production and everything. If you got 2025 yes. release, you've been casting, mm -hmm. you did your pre-production, you got your shot locations, you got everything set up, good yes. to go. And these are huge movies that are not easy to do. Nope. Now. Uh, for those keeping track at home, Jurassic World, that three movie series wrapped up last year, 2022, I believe, was the last installment of that franchise. We all confessed that none of us saw the last movie right. when yeah, no one saw back Dominion. the OGs, thinking that that would get us back in the seats. But that second movie was such a cluster that we just stopped after that. Yeah, though a lot of other people must have watched it. A billion dollars. <laughs> Made a billion dollars, One worldwide box billion. office. Yeah. Um, so, so like we've seen, we had the original batch of movies. We had that that Bryce Dallas Howard, Chris Pratt batch of movies. Where do you think this franchise could go? Now we don't know. Is this like a hard reboot? Is it a um, you know going along in a timeline? Can we quickly check IMDb to see if Chris Pratt's busy or currently filming something? Because I don't want him in this next. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're gonna keep making Mario movies till we're all dead. So, uh, but he doesn't have to do anything with that. But just show trying to voice over. That's true. So that that eliminates that. You know what? Uh, with that Super Mario movie, Chris Pratt was like the least interesting thing about that movie, yes, and he wasn't the worst voice actor. I no. Said it. Ooh. And Are you Taylor Joy. Oh, that's not a good yeah. Princess Peach. Nope. Now, now, do I have a soft spot for Ms. Peach, having played her as Mario Kart 64 for over a decade or two? Yes. <laughs> and when her line of dialogue was, here we go, and she didn't do any semblance of, here we go, was I pissed off? Yes. How do we... Chris Pratt wasn't the worst part of it. Oh, okay. That's how we get back to Jurassic World. Um, yes. So, well, I, I have a pitch for this. Go ahead. And this, this is like not necessarily getting into plot or anything like that, yeah. but it's been a long held beef among some paleontology heads, okay? <gasps> T-Rex did not actually exist in the Jurassic period. He exists in the Cretaceous period. 
So all you gotta do, baby, to freshen up this franchise, call it Cretaceous Park. You had me until the name change. I like debunking a tried and tested thing. We all grew up dinosaur lovers. Yeah, so everybody like, has that period when they're like 8, 10, 12, whatever. Six. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Do yes. Who in no cares about what period a T Rex was in? Nobody knew anything about the Jurassic period until 1992 when that movie dropped. This is fair. Okay. We could start. I'm just saying to make it feel a little. It's like a soft reboot for the viewer too. You still kind of get it because it's got park or world in there, but Cretaceous world, right? Not anyway. World. You're gonna see a whole bunch of YouTube videos with dudes sitting in their car on the side. See, they went woke and took it out of the Jurassic <laughs> area. <laughs> now they ain't made it crustaceous. <laughs> what are you gonna change. have, huh? LGBTQ you, plus you dinosaurs? dinosaurs? My dinosaurs can't use the bathroom. Who would erase switching my pteranodon? I want my pteranosaurus <laughs> dark green. Don't make them laugh. Okay, well, uh, I then have my theory of where I think Please. it could go. Um, I just think that with technology and as technology evolves, it's yes. like what we can do with dinosaurs evolve. And it kind of touched on it in that the, what, the movie we didn't love, which was like, how do you super soldier the dinosaur? What if we made him like cyborgy? What if it's like half dinosaur, half machine? Ooh, like edging into the Transformers franchise. Yeah, well, I mean, isn't that bit. the same studio? That's Paramount. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I suppose Universal, but hey, they can they can scoop in and take no, some of that Paramount lunch. Yeah, Paramount you know I mean? needs that franchise apparently. Yeah, I, I think if we're gonna do, we're gonna go interesting in a whole new way, right? We want a whole new fan base, ladies and gentlemen. I need you all to stay with me on this, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like I say, it's with straight face. Real dinosaurs of Beverly Hills. Now listen. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hear me out. Okay. Yeah. Hear me out. We have dinosaur lives, okay? We see the struggles that the dinosaurs go through trying to develop homes, okay? Yeah. There is a T-Rex. He is cheating on his other <gasps> T-Rex partner. He, right, he cheated with a stegosaurus. <laughs> now they got mixed breed babies out here running around. Wow. It's just interesting. This is the way you go. Now all of a sudden it's dino family court. Now you gotta have the dino sitting in front of Judge uh, Judge Judy. They bring her back for an episode, even though she's like 9,000 years old. Yeah. I, you know, I feel like we can do this, Zach. Judge Judy started in the Cretaceous <laughs> period. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's some fun stuff. Well, and, and like, really, people, people think of dinosaurs, obviously, when you think of that whole franchise, because that is kind of the defining feature. But also, like, that first movie was like just a couple human, it had a diehard element to it yes. too, right? They're trapped, things have gone wrong, how do they escape or get out with the added element of these dinosaurs coming from or whatever. I think it's like getting back to that. Anytime the dinosaurs like make it to the mainland and it feels like it's edging more into Godzilla territory, yeah. it's less interesting for me. I like it when it's, it's a human dropped into a dino world rather than a dino dropped into a human world. Yes. Maybe they go back in that direction a little bit. I got, I got, I got one more, okay. I got one more. Now, Jeff Goldblum crushed with the fly. Mm -hmm. What if, animorph style, Jeff Goldblum starts actually transforming into a dinosaur? And he breathes sexy like this with his <laughs> chest? He just does a sexy breathe with the yes. chest? I think that's what we all really, truly want to see. You know, as a dinosaur, you, you, you've got to, you got to, you got to. Uh, <laughs> see? You just. <laughs> right. Chaos theory is that, you know, is the dinosaurs, we've, 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 we've evolved. But then he like so he elongates his teeth. And, and he is a velociraptor. <laughs> yeah. I, like I think we wrote that movie without writing it. And also, I want that sound effect stayed in this clip. <laughs> that was, that was a good, that was a good screech. Yeah. I do think like, on the one hand, it's a challenge because there's been six or seven Jurassic films we've seen a lot of that like and not only that but like what was the adam driver movie that came out last year 65, 65, 65. Yeah, even like that? anyone three people and in all the two of one even adam driver all, all the kong and and godzilla movie there's a lot of like monster first stuff they, you know they, it's a, <gasps> i'm sorry i knocked over no, that's good the shit out of me because uh, they don't have monsters and i'm really they hurt them. us um <laughs> but like to to get back the novelty they have to do something, right? It needs to feel different. It can't just feel like another in a long line of that franchise installment. So I'm interested to see. There's some, you know. Okay. I'll, I'll help. I'll Those talk. are talented folks. So we're looking forward to it. 
Um, you oh. got to give Zach his credit for keeping a straight face doing this the whole time. <laughs> I mean, he's staying straight face and sticking to his thought the whole I'm, time. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm one of the clumsiest people alive, so I've gotten used to knocking things over and just Dino finishing case? a sentence. Yeah. Dino saw, Dino conquered. That's what it should be called. Oh my god! Wait, say it one more time. Dino, Dino Kane. Kane. Dinosaur, dinosaur, dino conquered. It only works in your accent, though, does it? Dino conquered. Dinosaur. Sour. Uh, yeah, because you get some Reddit. Dinosaur. I also think the first one's going to turn into a whole subreddit of its own. Dino came. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a bunch of just. Those, those subreddits exist. <laughs> you got I've, the brontosaurus giving I've, neck. I visited into a couple of those. Um, okay, next up. I'm sorry. Uh, Disney, Disney dropped a surprise trailer today for the final season of The Bad Batch. Yes. Uh, Bad Batch season three. Let's let's take a look. Let's roll that trailer. Hold on. I wasn't planning on killing you. That's a sad man, yes! Very touching. <laughs> That's a sad. There she is. She's so great. She's got hair. <laughs> ah, she's got a different color lightsaber. Oh, okay, I got a lot to say about this now. <laughs> yes, go off. Go Ooh, off. I'm sweating. <laughs> um, okay, so Asajj Ventress canonically has died. In the book uh, The Dark Disciple uh, by Christy Golden, released 2015, talks about the, the takedown of Count Do Dooku. Now, this is what's really interesting because Asajj Ventress was the apprentice of Dooku. So he raised her mm. to be... A ruthless Sith villain, mm -hmm. and throughout sort of the Clone Wars, she was horrendous. Like she was so evil, and she was, but she was so good at her job. Throughout the course of that, though, she recognized that you know, with the rule of two, with the apprentice and the and the the Sith Lord, that Dooku was going to kill her, and so she basically fled the system, stopped being a Sith, and ended up being sort of like a mercenary for hire. And in that sort of mercenary for hire. Um, you see her work with the bounty hunters. You see her kind of like forge a name for herself in that regard. Now, this book kind of tackles Asajj Ventress post sort of like uh, her Sith days. She, in fact, teams up with a Jedi. I think he's a Jedi Knight called Quinlan Voss. Now, Quinlan Voss is very much sort of like your Han Solo, smooth kind mm. of guy. He goes undercover a lot. He does a lot... Um, in sort of like, and I love this side of things, but a heist. So he'll be undercover in a heist to kind of collect mm -hmm. uh, rare relics. He's tasked to team up with Asajj Ventress to bring down Count Dooku. And I don't want to spoil too much of the book, but you would think that Asajj Ventress having a lot of time in the dark side and the dark powers would have a negative effect on Quinlan Boss. It turns out he's actually getting swayed towards the dark side. She... Spoiler, dies in the book. She dies and it's mm. canon. But Asajj Ventress is one of those characters that is so good. She kept popping up in the Clone Wars. Um, she's got a lot of, like, she's a fan favorite. So I think it's interesting here that they're bringing her back. Now, when did she have hair? That's news for me. She's got a fucking sick little do there. Oh, she's so, <laughs> yeah. she's Okay, she's also queer bait. Like, <laughs> she, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> They know what they're so, doing with So wait, her. How, do they, how do those timelines interact with... This is going to have to be in her left the Sith under Dooku's reign and is now, I think, uh, the free to hire. So I wonder if she is going to be working with Boba Fett, who mm. throughout the Clone Wars you saw him grow older but mm. worked with other bounty hunters including... Um, Bosk and, all, you know, the other famous bounty hunters. Um, and so I'm wondering if she's a mercenary for hire in this one, but it has to be before that because at the end of the book, that's when she dies. So I, I think Quinlan Voss might be in this. I wonder if it's in that that particular timeline. But the fact that we get more Asajj is a win for Star Wars. And we saw a little Cad Bane there. So like multiple characters that have been in live action and animation. That's so cool. so he started off in the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of like, you know, your Thrawn level villain where you're like, this guy is incredibly brilliant. He's very, very smart. You saw him in Mandalorian and he was brought to life. So that was mm. super cool as well. Um, so yeah, I wonder if it's like... Bad Batch is essentially about all of the um, rejected um, clone... Clone... Clones? Troopers. Clone yeah. troopers. And so I'm wondering if they're going to bring in sort of all the defected 
villains that have something to gain. Yes, question? Um, Ellie Camelli asks, do you think the editing of the trailer could be a misdirect with her actually working with the Bad Batch? Do you think, how does that like kind of like... Oh, oh cause it looks, though we never see them in the same frame. Yeah. We see her like uh, lightsabering, uh, you know, laser blasts or whatever, and then you turn and then the next frame is them holding their guns. So yeah. like we are to believe that they were shooting at her, but we don't know that that was necessarily the case, right? I think with the hair, that sort of identifies her freedom. So I don't think she's under any, I don't think this is definitely post Sith. She's gonna be working for whoever's got the most credits. So she could still be going against them if like they're in the way of her job or mission or something like true, that potentially. True. Yeah. Cause she does a lot of things that are, you know, under the radar. That Black market. Yeah. Dark stuff. Yeah. yeah. It looks great. And we, we, I was saying the animation looks Awesome. But also, she usually has two uh, sabers that I think were purple, and they were curved tilted like Dooku's. Um, she has a whole new saber in this one, and it's lighter. Oh. It is lighter in color. Metaphoric there? I think mm. so. Mm. Uh, what's the release date on Bad Batch? 21st of February. <laughs> Said it. Almost exactly a month from now. Um, I think. I think they're dropping three episodes the first day, and then weekly after that. I think it's a 16 episode season? 16? Something like that. That's so we're cool. gonna have a couple months of Bad Batch in our lives, should you choose. Um, uh, supervising director Brad Rao, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Brad, uh, ha was uh, quoted saying to Nerdist, we don't want to spoil anything, but we want fans to know that any new storytelling with Ventress will align there with the events of, of Star Wars Dark Disciples, so just like go. Maude was talking about. Yeah. So. so we'll get Quinlan Voss for sure, because they teamed up together. Ooh, yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, okay, we want to uh, shout out a sponsor of the program today. So we're going to cut to Evan. Handsome Evan. Yeah. Cute Evan. Thanks, guys. All right, so we know you love nerding out about TV and film with us, so we think you'll geek out over Avatar Braving the Elements, Nickelodeon's official companion podcast to Avatar The Last Airbender. Each week, hosts Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, rewatch every episode of The Last Airbender. They're joined by special guests like the cast, super fans, and even the creators of Avatar, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitsko, for a deep dive and behind-the-scenes look into the Avatarverse that you can't get anywhere else. When I first started working on The Break Room, one of the first things John and I bonded over was our love for Avatar. We both grew up loving the show, and I can't wait to listen to this podcast more and relive the seasons. So whether you're a longtime fan or new to the series, jump into the epic world of Avatar with Avatar Braver Than the Elements. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Back to you guys. Okay. Caught. You got caught. Did you get up there? He had his phone yeah, out. Yeah, he was like, come back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he was just da on Instagram. didn't give us the old three second heads up. He was like, we're, oh, back, we're, we're back, we're back, we're <laughs> back. Damn it, Dashiell. Uh, shit. Um, uh, Maud. Oh, yeah, I just happened to be wearing my boy Aang on a shirt. Funny, funny story, it's glow in the dark. How cool oh, is that? Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, now, big fan of the original Avatar. Um, it was on Nickelodeon. I grew up watching it. Actually, I hosted Nickelodeon when the show was huge. Um, the podcast is really cool because Janet Varney is the voice of Korra, which was the follow up show to Avatar The Last Airbender and Dante Basco, who you would know from Hook yeah, as Rufio. Rufio. Yeah, Dante I named it Tamagotchi after him, yeah. Rufio. <laughs> died in three days. Um, oh, the, the Tamagotchi, the not- Tamagotchi did, Dante Basco. You know, like Dante's still living, right? Dante is alive and well. He voiced Prince Zuko, um, and he's got such a great voice in it. But yeah, that's a really cool podcast, and hopefully I'll be on in a future episode. Yeah. And now that I said that, it has to happen. Ha ha ha, that's how I do this. We, we thank them for sponsoring the show, but also we demand they get mod on that podcast. Get uh, mod there. Uh, we also want to thank our friends at Jelly Bean Planet. Uh, this has become a feature of the office. We keep these little boxes of uh, jelly beans all around the office. Jay, you're welcome to help, help yourself. We also have, whoa, mod going in. Full, two, full scoops. Let's have his other packaging, a smaller thing. You don't have to buy your jelly beans by the bucket. We do. Uh, but you can get a smaller package. This is a good gift. You know, Valentine's Day is not too far away. Do you guys like getting candy as a gift or giving candy as a gift? I love garbage. Oh, you love garbage, bitch? So much. So much. I, I like candy as a gift because it's also one of those gifts where, like, hey, I bought you a big thing of jelly beans. I'm going to get a couple of those, too. You know what I mean? Like, well, this is for us to have a shared communal experience. Also, jelly beans are so good. Yes. Agreed. Um, I really like these. Oh. Uh, I, I already know the mod's answer. I asked last week, I asked um, Brandon and Jessica, 
your preferred jelly bean eating strategy. Are you one of these, like I grab all the pinks and eat those and all the blues and eat those? Or are you like modern me where you just shove a giant handful of random ones I'll in your mouth? I'll be honest, I actually do have a technique. Okay. I'll pour out the allocated amount, a mm -hmm. handful, and then I split them up into the flavors. And then whatever one has the most in that flavor, you eat that one until you have the same amount of numbers. And then you keep eating one at a time until you... Wow. That's so confusing. No, it's not. It's like actually like the most smart way to do it because it's like a palate equilibrium. It's, ah. like, it's like you turn you turn eating jelly beans into like stamp collecting kind of or something mm. like that. Like a Way to make it sound like the most uncool thing you, you, that I You do. make yeah, it into you, Minecraft. You need to you're, you're doing... Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're you're Robloxing your... That was uh, terrible. Um, well, regardless of your methodology, you should do it with our friends at Jelly Bean Planet. Check the link in the description that goes to their Amazon um, listing uh, of this product, and they have some other great products. We really love these. We're eating them around the office all the time. You're gonna hear us talk about Jelly Bean Planet a little bit more. Uh, and they, they also, that. they're also good. They don't use any of the bad stuff, no palm oil or, or um, gelatine or other bad stuff you don't want in your jelly beans, just the good stuff. Just good tasty jelly beans. So support the show by clicking the link in the description and grabbing some for yourself. Head to Amazon. Okay, now on to some Marvel news. Okay, we got our first images from What If Season 3. I guess we had a little footage from What If Season 3, that kind of car chase sequence mm -hmm. with Bucky and Red Guardian. Uh, but now we got some still images that they were tweeting out. Now. Who's that? Okay, so we were debating Monica in the office. Shore. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's Monica Rambeau. That's, that's, that's definitely Sam Wilson. Who's that third guy? White guy. Now I think they My gave him. They get oh. Well, uh, they gave him a five o'clock shadow. I know he did, is he a little lazy. What is that? Yeah, like it's interesting because I'm trying to think of like which white guy in the MCU is most known for having a five o'clock shadow. B bursting Maybe? to be a man. Yeah, one of our editors, Drew, said that he thought it was Bucky with a haircut. Let um, me see it again. Keep Bucky's it up a little thicky, don't you think? I didn't think he was that tall. Bucky later that we'll look at. Wait, him. look at that. Look at his left arm. Go back. Look, oh, that is Bucky. Uh, that is Bucky. Bucky. Oh, it is different. A That's a great, great pull there, Jay. Bucky's okay. that tall. Does it? Which is weird because actually one of the other images is also Bucky, but with his more signature look. Show me that. With the with the shaggy hair. See, okay, I'm squinting. Uh, they're not the same person. But I guess that guy does have five o'clock shadow. That's Bucky. That's Bucky. Do you think Bucky got a haircut? It's possibly. Because look at Chucky. it. Go back to this, uh, the the one with the three, please, Dasher. Because they're at Shield headquarters. It's uh, more. They're at Shield headquarters. Look behind you. Look at the insignia behind him. Yeah, yeah, I see. But, he's, so, in the, he's in the guard. I guess he also the Winter Soldier or Bucky doesn't have like a signature like an emblem. He doesn't have a logo. Like, yeah. like uh, um, Sam Wilson has there with the Captain Crest. So, okay. um, and then there's another. This one, which we were joking, is uh, what if Gundam? Um, <laughs> what which, if Gundam? Oh, which I, is I, like I know a, that one. And then this is. Uh, <laughs> I know that one. This is appears to be Ant Man and or Goliath. or Goliath holding up Red Guardian. Maybe this is also from the same image that the Bucky and Red Guardian image is from that we also have seen footage from. That I think was an, supposed to be a uh, season two episode yeah. mm. that got pushed to season three. Um, do you want to say anything? Bucky, call me. Oh. I prefer the long hair. No one asked. Yeah, it's his signature style. Plus, there's not that many long-haired guys in the MCU. It's it's, it's Thor. It's also so, you can pull so she just said, it's so you can <laughs> no, pull no, his no, hair. No. Technically, you can pull short hair. It's just much easier to grab your hands around longer hair. Let me have it. I got nothing. I got uh, nothing. Just wait till we get. Which one do you think is cuter? Is it the long-haired Bucky or the short-haired Bucky? I'm gonna go with the long hair Bucky. Was that? Yeah, because again, it, it looks like he conditions. Yeah. <laughs> looks like he conditions. I like him when he has his weird uh, face mask deal on. It makes him scary and, and unknowable. Oh, um, Bum, Bumman with Bo had a good point. Maybe that's President Bucky in like his younger days, potentially, because there was one of the What If episodes had Bucky as like a uh, president or a senator. I forget exactly oh. what it was. So maybe uh, yeah, that's you know, a similar time I was gonna line. say, he kind of looked like uh, Dermot Mulroney from yeah. uh, Secret Invasion a little, a little bit, bit in the face, yeah, you bit. know? Um, I've got one last thing. Pull up Gundam image. Look at what what's it holding? Captain America's shield. There you go. A gigantic. That's like all the all the vibranium in Wakanda was needed to make that shield. What's also I like that that appears to be some kind of an Arctic terrain. 
uh, a lot of the Pacific Rim franchise, I feel like they end up going to uh, they're they're in like Alaska or everything's something like that. Frozen and ice. Yeah. Oh yeah, and also Captain America, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't it be funny instead of getting Steve Rogers out of the ice? There's a 200 foot robot frozen in the ice. <laughs> it's um, been here for years. Can I see it one more time? Because the other one next to it. Oh yeah. Do you think yeah. that's like a Bucky Gundam or? No, I think that's Monica. Oh. That's Monica. Because of kind of the color scheme yeah. and whatever's going on. Because of the color scheme. That's a Monica. It's also like very different design. Like the Captain America one has giant bulky legs and that one has kind of feathery, lighter, smaller legs. So maybe like I wish y'all could have seen Evan bouncing in his little thing while he was doing the leg <laughs> thing. I just wish y'all could have seen Give us Evan. a little gun to bounce there. Give us a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's him. What's it called in Pacific Rim? When... Oh, that, uh... The drivers of yeah, the, the drivers. or whatever they have to do the weird VR uh, walking. Remember there um, was an Australian Pacific Rim and it was played by two non-Australians. I do. Oh, really? They couldn't yeah. get. I feel like half the actors in Hollywood are from Australia. Australia. They couldn't get yeah, any of them. I know. I know. And actually, that's how well, the, one of the guys was British. And my oh. first question on the carpet for him was, "That was brave of you." Anyway, we became friends after that. So. <laughs> that was brave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, crossing the Commonwealth there. Um, uh, now, when speaking with comicbook.com, uh, Phase Zero, uh, director Brian Andrews said that he originally thought the new season uh, would come out by the end of 2024, uh, but it, he does not think that will be the case. And we That's, do not have them slated for this year. Because, like, the actor strike wouldn't have effect. Oh, it would for the yes, final so voicing. But I mean, for, like, the, the storyboarding and drawing it all up. Yeah, I also wonder, there's three other animated Marvel series coming out this year with X-Men 97, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, and Eyes of Wakanda. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're also just like, we don't need four Marvel right. animated shows in yeah, one year. Yeah, because they're, they're filling up all the schedule with the animated shows because they don't have anything besides Deadpool 3 that's, it. Yeah. that's dropping. So yeah. why would you give that away? Just like, no, we can put this in a can. S space it out space a little bit out. more. Yeah. But maybe, maybe we can, fingers crossed, we get it right at the beginning of 2025. Maybe a little January, February release. That'd I be like nice. the fact that it was like a little Christmas holiday special this mm -hmm. time around. I liked that. Can we get, just say for the fact that we keep saying these years and how far we realize it's 2024 now. It'd be 2025. That is just wild to keep hearing. Yo, so when's the next Avengers movie? 2030. <laughs> yeah. 2030. Like, we're, we're currently in the future. We are in the future. So I was promised fl flying cars. Um, okay, <laughs> on to some other Marvel news. So, you know, there's been a lot of Fantastic Four casting rumors mm -hmm. for the better part of a year now, longer. Um, but Daniel RPK, who's one of the internet scoopers, who's a little bit more reputable, um, he uh, said that the casting is locked. I believe he was saying this on X. Uh, and that an announcement is imminent. And the casting that he's saying is locked is Eben Moss uh, Backrack, who just won an Emmy along with... Uh, he smooched his male co-host yes, for like 40 uh, seconds. Along he with did not come up for air quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Along with a lot of the cast of The Bear, they won all the Emmys. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you might also recognize him from a great arc in Andor. Season one, uh, he was fun there. So he's supposedly he been cast as... Also micro in season one of The Punisher. Oh, mm. good call. He's already got a little flavor of the MCU in him. Um, so he's supposed to have been cast as Ben Grimm uh, and uh, Pedro Pascal as no! Mr. Fantastic. Oh. Uh, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm. Storm. And then um, Quinn, what's his first name? Joseph Quinn, Joseph Quinn yes. from Stranger Things as Chris, Johnny Storm. Uh, supposedly, we're going to hear about that any day. It'll be interesting. In the past, for big news like that and big casting, Marvel has wanted to do that like on a stage somewhere. Mm -hmm. We do have San Diego Comic-Con coming up in the summer. And then right after that in August is, is a D23. Two opportunities for Kevin Feige to July? get out there in his ball cap. Yeah, but that does feel like a long time to wait. That's why, it's way too long. If you can announce it now, then you're like, yo, they announced Fantastic Four now. That can mean they can be filming already. Sure. And at San Diego Comic-Con or D23, you get actual footage. Oh. Yeah. Do you, do you want to know? Mm, no, she's not. I thought she was in Argyle. She's not, is she? Mm -mm. She was in the other one with Henry Cavill. Gosh, they're sexy. Oh, were they in a Mission here. Impossible together or a different it film? Wasn't. It was a Mission yeah. Impossible. The one where he cocked his arm. The, and the t-shirt had a pocket. Yeah. 
Um, Vanessa Kirby's great in that franchise. She's great in everything. She's I great. mean, it's all good casting. I think she we're, was we're excited. She was good in Napoleon. This. The only person who was. Oh, yes, yeah, she played Josephine, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, because Napoleon wasn't even good in Napoleon. Oh, well, my that's God. Wow. Um, so, I, I guess agree. this is, you know, maybe until we start getting X Men casting news, which is probably farther off, this is going to be some of the biggest kind of Marvel casting news that we're going to get for a while. How do you feel about these big kind of announcements? You know, we got a little taste of this last year with the Superman legacy casting over mm -hmm. in the DC. Mm -hmm. um, like, does it impact how you view the movie when we're still maybe two years out from seeing it? Like, no, I don't think it changes anything. It's just like, oh, you know, these people will be together, right? You're like, this grouping of people is going to play this group of people who we've seen in different iterations now and we've been praying for better. Plain and simple when you say Fantastic Four. So nobody's going to sit there and be like, Pedro Pascal. Now everybody's already like, is, could he been Reed Richards? I'm like that. A lot of mm. people was like, Pedro Pascal. I love Pascal, him. He's fantastic. He's, but he's not. He's uh, not. Wait, say that again. He's what? He's fantastic. There you go. <laughs> did it fantastic. yourself. You I mean, did it yourself. <laughs> so you get Pedro Pascal. Like we all just said about Vanessa Kirby, Joseph Quinn, and then Evan Backrack. You get them all together. You're like, oh, I like these actors. So... It goes back to something you were saying before we went on air. Marvel, before they first started, was getting actors who weren't stars yet. Right. And at this point, all the stars have come over in this franchise. Jessica Alba was a star. Oh, well, that she was, was at yeah, her Fox, She, she wasn't in the MCU, fantastic. though. She wasn't in the MCU. Right. Yeah. That was Fox. Fox Fantastic Four. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, we, we were saying, though Pedro Pascal is as big a name in the last five years mm -hmm. as anybody, is it TV... Right? Like, he has not made any giant blockbuster films, necessarily. And none of these people, would you say, are movie stars. Um, you know, they didn't pull in a, a Vin Diesel or a Bradley Cooper or something like that, mm -hmm. even though they're voice actors in the MCU, right? Like, no, like, really known quantity, like, oh, that person's already spearheaded a franchise, or that person's really super famous for this other thing. Which is, like, hearkening back to, like, phase one, when even, like, names like Mark Ruffalo and, and Chris Evans that had been around and you'd seen them and stuff, they weren't movie stars, really. Do you know what I think? I think two things when you have a non-A-lister at that at the top of their game. Uh, one, the budget's going to go towards the, the graphics yeah. and yeah. The, the, the special effects, which I'm really excited about because yeah. they can actually spend it where it's required. And B, they're going to lock these son of a guns in as much yes. as they can, as quickly as they can, yeah. for as long as they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. It's easier to get somebody to do a eight movie commitment of like showing up in three Fantastic Four movies and some Avengers crossovers and whatever. Which is like one of RDJ's paychecks. Yeah. But for them over eight years, it's huge. That's a huge, huge. carrot for them. Yeah. Yeah. And they can invest in these actors who maybe we don't have as many preconceived like, oh, I can only ever see that character as this iconic thing. And I will say going back to the, the Pedro Pascal of it all, it's interesting because Though, again, between Joel and Last of Us and The Mandalorian and all the way back to Game of Thrones, right? He's had these iconic characters. He's knocked them out of the park. He hasn't played a scientist, a brainiac, a smart guy. Which, so that you might think that's like not in his wheelhouse, but like what a great challenge for a good actor for you to see him, to make you see him in a totally new way, right? All he's gotta do Put on some smart glasses. Get real clean shaven. Give us that little gray temple, right? And then he's then he's touching a touch screen, and he's got his you know whatever, and you're like, oh, it's him, you know. Have a reference to him knowing Stark. <laughs> yeah, you gotta yeah. have a him knowing Stark or how whether it be more than likely Tony. Him and Tony have had some cross at MIT, because mm. something like that. I'm trying to really watch what I say because I know so much what's happening. Oh, with interesting. This movie. So okay. I'm trying to, I know so much about it. You've been holding out on me this whole time? Yes, I have. Oh. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So I'm trying to watch what I say. But you can have him and Tony have met in MIT. Because again, we know, if you, have a, you have a little back, little back log story or whatever. But we know, we already established, this is not an origin story. So when we see them, we are not seeing Eben Backrack as a guy. We're seeing Ben Grimm as the thing. We're seeing oh, he, Pedro Pascal is going already to be, be stretchy. already been stretchy. Vanessa Kirby already making the Invisible Force feels, and Joseph Quinn is already flaming on. So all this has already happened with them. So that's the one thing people have to understand too and get to grips with like, yo, are we going to see how they got it? We know the story. Let's move on. Mm. Yeah, I got a couple of questions with casting then. The first one is, do you see Pedro and Pascal and Vanessa Kirby as a real life couple? 
do you see them as a compatible husband and wife? Interesting. Can mm. you see that? Can you see that? That's really important. Well, clearly Marvel had to in a screen test. Mm. Probably. You got to think about that part. And, and I will, I will say, uh, Vanessa Kirby, I believe, is in her later thirties. No. So though she's much mid thirties. Mid thirties. Okay. Well. <laughs> 35, 36, yeah. maybe? That okay, whatever. Really, really uh, really but, so though Pedro Pascal is much older than her, it's not like it's, it's like him and a 24-year-old or something like no, that, it's right? It's like 35 and 47. What is it? And he's 48 and she's 35. Okay, so, you know, close-ish. He looks great for his age. Um, second, they're clearly, it's a very different move than the last Fantastic Four we saw, the Michael B. Jordan and... Um, that doesn't, that don't exist. Uh, right, that cast where it was like, everybody was like 24 and cute and like unbelievable as being Fan super scientists stick. or whatever, right? And four stick, So it's like, these are, even Joseph Quinn is like, you know, a little bit older than mm -hmm. like most of that cast. And obviously the other three are like... He played a high older. schooler last year. I yes. mean, not a believable high schooler, come on. Uh, but, oh yeah, he was also like kept back a few years. Yeah, My next yeah. question then is Vanessa Kirby and Joseph Quinn, do they look like siblings yeah maybe depending on what what hairstyles we're getting in this she's always blonde and he's not but maybe they could do something there <laughs> their noses are totally different God damn it, Zach. he's always blonde and he's not <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, do they, they, they do they colors. change it up, or do they make them? Ad I mean, in in the fantastic, the no, last fantastic, they were adopted. Do they were adopted one. siblings. Don't do it because that's how bad it was. The fact that we made Michael B. Jordan <laughs> and who, I forgot who plays the who's, Mara sister, Kate Mara. Yeah, yeah. Kate, Kate Mara. Mara. You're like, there. What? <laughs> You're like, all right. I quit. I quit everything about this movie. No. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And um. Yeah, how they how they establish it, what the the tone, you know, there's all the speculation that it was like earlier versions, like the John Watts version of this script was going to be like set in the '50s and it was going to be like a retro thing, and like that's not the direction they're going. Well, anymore. we had that in one division, really. Yeah, tangentially, yeah. but yeah, we had yeah. It. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting, like the tone, the setup of this movie. Like, if it's not an origin story, where have these people been? Mm -hmm. Finding. Finding X Men out there. Which is that's gonna be enough. Oh, did I? Was it close? Was it hot? Was it like Johnny Storm hot? Like, what am I? How close am I? Speaking, <laughs> speaking of hot. Mom, ah! Uh, before God damn, we get prom class. Uh, <laughs> before we get to the rest of the episode, we want to shout out another sponsor, a uh, Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Things change as you age, you know. And if you want to turn back the clock to a more energetic time in your life. BlueChew.com can help. BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. It's super easy to do. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. It's all done online. Don't gotta go to the doctor's office. Don't gotta, you know, cover your face as you hustle into a, a, a doctor's office or something like that, or go to the pharmacy. If you're skeptical or don't think you need it, try it for a month and see. Mm -hmm. uh, Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Ah, no, is that the slogan? And, yep. That's and right. we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free with, when you use our promo code BREAKROOM at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code BREAKROOM to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show. Let me tell you something. Give yourself a Valentine's Day is coming up. Give yourself a green you know what? with that Blue Chew and some jelly beans. Get yourself some jelly beans and some Blue, blue Chew. chew? Be careful, be careful which hand is holding yeah. which. <laughs> so you don't accidentally get a big scoop of blue chews. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want one of those. Here like Chinese uh, geography. Of... You don't want to be around here harder uh, than old ink and math. <laughs> and then and we want to shout out real quick, this is a good transition to our next topic. Um, we've got some uh, break room merch coming out very soon on, our, on nerdriot.shop. We've also got a brand new Madam Web Show inspired design. That's actually Ooh, really nice. So that's it's, nice. It's, it's, it's inspired by those Roy Lichtenstein paintings with the dots and the old school cartoon style. But now I don't know if you can tell here, but in the word bubble, mm. she's saying, no. I, know, I know him. No. He was... <laughs> Doing research in the Amazon oh, no, with my why? mother before she died. Those spiders when she died. That's what it says in the word word bubble. I need that shirt just because of the quote there. <laughs> you can get that shirt. It's available as of today, as of right now, at nerdriot.shop. Um, okay, yes, in, into our last bit of headlines here. Mm -hmm. uh, Daredevil Born Again 
It's supposedly resuming shooting today. Cool. As of today, per The Hollywood Reporter, uh, saying the show will not be 18 episodes, as it was first announced back in 2022. Um, and it will be closer to, I assume, all the other Disney Marvel, Ten? Disney Plus releases. That's six. Six to eight. But a standard, a standard Netflix original series model, I think, is eight to ten. Eight to ten. Okay. So, so instead of 18, it's 10. I'd be okay with that. Zone. Yeah. That's 18's what, a lot. When they said 18, I was like, oh, you must be chopping. 18 episodes means they've got to be chopping it into three seasons automatically. Mm. Yes. That's what I instantly thought. Six, I heard 12, 18. Eight, yeah. I was like, 18 is chopped up. There's no way you're giving us 18 episodes in one season. Yeah. Like, that's not a Disney Plus that's like show. Five months in a row of weekly yeah, episodes not, or something not like do that. that. Just, you know, yeah, it, and it was so many more episodes than any of the Marvel shows had been announced. If it did feel unusual, though, it was also coming at a time when like Andor was greenlit for two seasons off the bat, mm -hmm. and that was a little bit. Wasn't Andor season one ten episode twelve? No, no, eight, eight. There's no way for us to find that out, so we'll just move on. Um, wait, wait, sorry. What, what were you eight. Saying? How many episodes are in Andor season one? Oh, uh, Andor season one. I think Maude is right. Oh, okay, uh, eight. It but was, oh no, it was twelve episodes. Yeah, twelve. And 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 like greenlit for two, so it was like twenty four total episodes. <laughs> even though it's going to take you know three years or whatever to get those out, so it kind of almost made sense at the time. But it did feel like way too many. Um, twelve. And and a reminder, right? This show had started filming. Then during the strikes, they obviously had to stop filming, and it also gave Marvel a little chance to like look at what had already been shot and the scripts, and to be like, you know what? We don't like this. So they kind of brought in a new creative team. Mm -hmm. They got two of the directors from Loki and a guy who wrote on um, the original uh, Netflix Daredevil and the fight coordinator mm -hmm. from the original uh, Daredevil on Netflix. And they kind of is a new team with the same cast. They've kind of, I, the word was they were going less legal procedural and more fisticuffs. That's cool. Um, Which is almost like an amalgamation of all the other Netflix Marvel shows that happened because they all took part in different places in New York. Yeah. But it was heavily like on the streets. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that's sort of like going to fall into... Did, did you ever see the there. map that they had of show where the defenders took place? Like it was all in a four block area. <laughs> like it was because each of them, like I said, it was on a different street. Yeah. But like they are Hell's all Kitchen. like in, this, in Hell's Kitchen. They're all like just in a different block area. I think the thing is you had to make this more fisticuffs, more action, more violent. That was the best part of the show. Yeah, yeah. no one cares. No, nobody wants to see Matt Murdock being an attorney all day. <laughs> No one does. He looks good in a suit. He can he look for in he looks the a, leather. And we'll get a little bit of that. But yeah, it is the it need, the bulk of it needs, yeah, to, be it needs to be fighting. That. And 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 we know that uh, John Barenthal's Punisher. That's is why be I don't have a season two of American so, Gigolo, ladies it, and gentlemen. It, oh well. I mean, I'm, I'm not. Let me just say this. I'm not mad. Make sure so. Make clear. Fly this up. I am not upset. But you once I find out, once you find out that, the, once you know that the star of your show is going back to being the Punisher in Marvel Studios, you're like, yeah, we're not getting to season mm. two. Well, and, and, and who knows which of those came first, too. I, I also blame the network, Jay. You know what? They could have done more for American Gigolo. <laughs> That's a still discussion. We'll have off air because I got some. Oh, okay. Jay has thoughts. But um, so this, this show, Dear Devil Born Again, could be maybe, you know, we don't know uh, if... Jessica Jones or Luke Cage or other characters might kind of appear and it's kind of like Iron a... Iron Fist, say it. Yeah, say sure, it. him no, too. No um, <laughs> or, or, and we know, obviously, Wilson Fisk, you know, D'Onofrio's Kingpin's going to be in there. So, like, you know, how many other people play in that world? Like, uh, a lot of the, the news, this Hollywood Reporter article also kind of read like a press release straight up from Disney. It was like hyper positive. Like, after the huge success of Echo, they've decided to pivot to more of this Could or whatever. I will say to be fair, after Echo, the views on the original yes. Daredevil Pebble and shot Luke, they up. shot up. It actually mm -hmm. did a resurgence of those yeah. shows. And it's like, yeah, those shows came out seven years ago, even eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a whole different generation. So for Echo to then bring that and make it relevant again, huge. Yeah, I'm just he, waiting to see the internet backlash on Iron Fist season one. Like, he, what the hell is this? Suffer well, and, as and, I have suffered. And it's even like, um, like the Suits phenomenon of like a show that was out there, but like you needed an excuse to get, you know, to get into it. It's like, oh, it shows up on a new streaming service. And maybe there's a little bit of like, oh, it's now getting recommended to me. Oh, I've always meant to go back and watch Daredevil or Punisher or something like that. Um, and, and how perfect there's going to be a lot of people, including here 
at New Rock Stars doing rewatches yeah. of those old shows as we get ready for Born Again to come out. I think early 2025 mm -hmm. is the goal. That's going to be the first live action show next year um, after we get uh, Agatha Coven of Chaos late this year. Um, so that this is all good news. And you know what? I fully support... If you feel like your show's not going to be good, make some changes and make it good. Yeah. I you think know? every studio took advantage of that. Marvel, Disney, Sony, Paramount. Everybody was like, we have this time. Yeah. Let's sit back and reflect. And I think because every studio was so, push it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. We use this C word that has become so net, so ugh, that we're being content. Get this content out, get it out, get it out, get it out. The strike stopped everything. Okay, what are people saying? What should we look at? Quality, not quantity. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Quality, not quantity. Oh. Content to T? No. Quantity. Okay. Guys, it's late in the episode. I used up my good shit earlier. Um, okay. And then last and most important, our Madam Web news so of the day. So important. Okay. This, this is the is... next Marvel thing we're getting, guys. Um, well, Sony. Yeah. Though it'll have that logo, you know? It'll have a Marvel logo at the beginning. Uh, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, speaking of things that feel like press releases, um, director S.J. Clarkson said that Madam Web is definitely in a standalone world. Standalone world. So, like, there's no I don't, I Tom really Holland, like to Peter Parker. I know what Jay Washington is praying for right <laughs> Well, now. because I was told by producer Evan to not be as aggressive as we've been. So You're not so. supposed to bring that up on air, I'm, No, Jay. I'm talking. I need it from my lips to God's ears. And like, <laughs> I, I'm well, and I, I've, I've been out there saying I'm excited to see this movie. Nah, I'm excited I'm just, to go into a superhero movie with moderated expectations and just I, be there. There's low I, stakes. I did that with Venom. I did that with Venom One. Yeah, and I think a lot of people did, and that that's why like that franchise seems to always sell a lot of tickets, right? Maybe it's because mm -hmm. like you know we need our our big tent poles to be our big tent poles, and then you need some just. Some little temple. You know, you need some you just need like... You need some Morpheus dancing. Yeah. Get in there. Just, just movies out there getting weird, taking swings. Um, and so, uh, S.J. Clarkson, the director, went on to say they were able to just have free reign and let the me movie be what it needed to be as opposed to trying to force it into something else. Like what did it universe. need to be? What does this movie need to be? L Lady spidering? Okay. <laughs> What? No, you know, I'm doing spider stuff. Here's the problem. I, I wish he wouldn't have said that. I re really wish he wouldn't have said that statement because now it's like, no, everybody's going to think it's this. And it should be that it's like, uh, we kind of have somewhat of an expectation because Sony has already said they're doing their own little universe, regardless if, if Tom Holland shows up or not. Right? But we know we've got... We've got a, a radioactive bat. We got a radioactive lion somewhere. Radioactive spider. Rhinoceros. A radioactive rhinoceros. We Paul Giamatto, I'm still mad. Yes. I'm still mad at your rhino. We, we, you deserve better. <laughs> you deserve better. But I think it's him saying, oh no, the movie needs, can be what it needed to be. Duh, bro, just. Well, and I like that in principle. We'll see if it works out in execution. Like like the Birds of Prey movie, I really enjoyed. I loved I it. Because it didn't feel like any of the other DC properties. It got to be sillier and weirder. Or some of like um, uh, James Gunn's Suicide Squad doesn't need to plug mm -hmm. into Batman or any other DC properties. It can be its own little thing that has its own unique feel. I hope that's what we get with Madam Web. Yeah. You know? That's but the do, expectation. Do you feel like it doesn't, okay, I, I get what you're saying, but do you feel like when it's been set up, that there's this connectivity that it should feel like it connects. I get exactly what you're saying. How some things just, yo, stand on your own, do what you do. But when things have been built up to say, hey, these all live in this world. Mm. Not Sony's world. Yeah, because Sony don't even know what lives in Sony's world. Like, yeah, is this movie in the same universe as Morbius? Right. Is she in the same New York City as uh, Dr. Dr. Michael Morbius? Um, when we know this movie's set in 2003, I what were you guys doing in 2003? I was starting primary school. Primary school? Oh, oh, you're doing bits. I was in college. You believed me, though. You thought about it for a second. I was like, what are you, 12? Primary school. Um, I was uh, out here being ratchet. Whoa. I was in these streets. Uh, 2003, I was in these streets. <laughs> I, was, I was a whore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Washington. I was a, with a hard day. It's been 21 <laughs> years since 2003. That's wild. There are people that can drink that mm -hmm. weren't born yet. Yep. Wow. Anytime somebody... Or just been born. If you yeah. ask somebody how old they... What year were they born and they have to say the word and, stop talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, what year was you born? 2000 and, stop talking to me. 
I say 19 and 82. You've yeah, only now, it. it's the only time you've ever said it. It was the first time, <laughs> and it was miserable for everyone. That's right. Um, actually, uh, Jessica Clemens and Eric Voss uh, did a video kind of about Madam Web and like these universes based on some of the kind of the news that's come out. Uh, you can check that out on the New Rockstars YouTube channel. We should probably wrap this uh, bad boy up yeah. Uh, yeah. before we get into any details about what Jay was actually doing in those streets in 2003. <laughs> uh, isn't it good that there were no probably no smartphones oh with, my with God, cameras? Oh my God, great there were no smartphones. I'm, I'm thrilled that when I was in college and, and doing uh, untoward stuff in North Florida that nobody had a cell we phone We all camera. had the... No, I wasn't live. <laughs> <laughs> You're three, Ma. Yeah, you don't know what's up. Um, uh, so, thank you so much for watching the show today on YouTube, if, if that's where you're watching us. If you're watching on Twitch, thank you so much. Um, we'll do a little Twitch-only <gasps> section cool. after we go off here. Watch us on Twitch if you want to see those little Twitch-only uh, sections. Um, you should follow both Maude and Jay on their social media platforms to know all the cool do. projects they're doing. Please do. Um, and the shows and, and the appearances and all the fun stuff they do. Uh, follow Break Room on Twitch and on YouTube. New rock stars all over the place. Um, follow whatever put back, put back social back. account was, was just under my name. It was really uh, hot. There it is. Who is that? Uh, Robo Kitty Z. Yeah. Follow them. Um, uh, they're worth a follow. Uh, and most importantly, have a great day. <laughs>